Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about books, top 7 books you must read in your life. If you're interested in this topic, continue watching. So this is, let's call it a contemporary list. I didn't include many classics in here because I assume that it's quite obvious what classics we should read in our lifetime because we all know it from school programs, from universities and stuff like that. So I didn't include them much. These are contemporary books which are, well, maybe, maybe except one or something. Um, which I've read personally and they have greatly impacted my life and my mindset and I would love to recommend them to you. I think that everyone should read those and it will greatly improve your mindset and your life. So let's get started. Before we dig into the list, I want to say that I wasn't a great reader all the time. I think when I was a teenager, it was super hard to get myself to read. I just couldn't concentrate or I wasn't interested much in the content. And every time I would pick up a book, I would be like reading the words, thinking about something else and somewhere on the back of my mind planning what I'm going to do for the rest of the day. And somewhere else also was thinking, who should I call, what should I do, my plans for life, daydreaming. Like there were so many things going on in my mind while I was reading. And by the end of like two pages, I would be like, so what did I just read? What is this even about? Like I wouldn't even catch any of the things that I've read this how bad it was. I don't know um, what would you call it? Was it an HDD or something like that? Like attention deficit disorder? I have no clue but I really couldn't concentrate. I don't know. Uh, yeah, well maybe there was just not the right books that um, that I would be interested in because in our school program and I grew up in Ukraine um, in schools there were many of the classics that I wasn't really excited about, honestly. Maybe there were like two books that I would be interested in but not as many. And yeah, it didn't help much, really. It didn't help. All that have changed, I came across interesting books and it completely changed my view and completely changed my perspective. And I was like, oh my god, this is so helpful. This is so interesting and some compelling stories could just carry me away. So I think it's mostly about the content of the books and particular topics that you might be interested in. So if you're not that much of a great reader, don't worry and don't be so hard on yourself. I think you just didn't come across the books that might be really, really of value to you. And I actually hope that my list would help you find those. I also wanted to mention a great app called Audible from Amazon, which allows to listen books, not reading, but listening. And this is quite a game changer. It saves so much time. And whenever I'm busy, um, I don't know, going to a meeting or I'm driving somewhere or, you know, I'm just doing something, washing the dishes or stuff like that, I would listen a book and that's just really game changer. It saves so much time and if you're not really into reading a book, this might actually be a great idea to start listening. And just to summarize my introduction, reading is a very powerful tool that can make your life successful. And just look at the entrepreneurs, all the entrepreneurs and their stories about reading. Most of them, well, almost all of them, they repeatedly say that they read at least an hour a day. And it comes to reading 20, 30 books per year. Look at Elon Musk, the great guy who invented Tesla, who invented SpaceX and all those great companies. He learned most of what he knows from reading books. And I love the phrase that he said. Um, he said something like, I didn't go to Harvard 
but the guys who work for me did. Elon Musk didn't follow the common path, didn't get a degree, didn't study normally like anyone would do. Instead, he learned everything from books. Bill Gates reads 50 books per year and Warren Buffett, one of the most rich guys in the world, he says that he reads five to six hours a day. That I think was the number. So yes, reading is very powerful. Anyhow, let's dig into my list and the books that impressed me and really influenced my life really a lot. So I want to start with this one. Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. I hope I pronounce his name right. I'm not sure. It's Israeli author and I preferred to get this book in hard copy actually, not on Audible. Um, I like listening, but I think reading a hard copy, um, it just makes your imagination work better more and whenever I want to stop and go back a paragraph and read it again it's just more comfortable for me to do it with a hard copy rather than an audio version. So anyways this book is quite amazing. It starts with the history of humankind all the way back millions and millions years ago. How did it all start? How did we get into our life? that we have today, the cognitive revolution, how we invented our languages, how humans learned to communicate, how humans learned to build their houses and to raise families, and how did they start an agricultural revolution, everything about the path as a human being. So this book is quite an eye-opener, to be honest. and. I recommend that book for everyone and anyone and I actually think that this would be a great book for the school program whenever kids learn about history I think this would be a great addition to it because here in only what is it 400 pages Yuval Noah Harari succeeded to cover pretty much the entire history of humankind. Generalized, but still quite clear and it puts everything into perspective and sort of makes sense out of our entire life. So this is number one. Number two is Dare to Lead by Brene Brown, right here. And this one I think you might be hearing a dog barking, but there is nothing I can do. He doesn't understand that I am recording a video. He doesn't care about YouTube. So, Brene Brown, Dare to Lead, amazing book. And it's great not only for entrepreneurs, business owners, chief executives, people who have to manage other people on their in their jobs, but also for people who just want to get better in communicating with other people, in public speaking, in creating a healthy, collaborative and productive environment. So this book teaches how to understand people, how not to fear to take the responsibility and take accountability for your actions and how to collaborate with others. So this is an amazing book, great for everyone just to Set up your mindset as a leader. Number three is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I think it's quite an old thing. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone knows this book. And it's not the news that I'm suggesting it. But probably because this book is so great that everyone talks about it. And it really is. This is the one right here. By the way, I don't have it in hard copy because I've actually downloaded this one on Audible, so I was listening to it and I think I finished it in like, I don't know, two days or something because I was doing something else and I was reading it, so I finished it really fast. That's the beauty of audiobooks. So anyways, whenever you want to understand better financial world, how the money system works, just how the financial world 
functions and maybe you want to start investing or you want to just create your wealth and start building a healthy financial situation this book is just like a foundation of it all without this mindset and this understanding that robert kiyosaki talking about in this book you will not be able to build anything like that's really the basics so anyone who wants to be successful and build wealth and create a healthy financial situation in life that's the book to start with number four the denial of death by ernest becker i know i know you must be thinking like are you crazy lena what are you talking about you're talking about death this is creepy yeah perhaps but that's actually something that he breaks down in the book it's a deep psychology and a deep understanding of the human condition what we're doing why we're doing what we're doing how come we are aware of the fact that we're going to die one day and how we're still able to function and to build something and to strive every day with that knowledge and there's this great phrase that i really really love from this book it goes to have emerged from nothing to have a name consciousness of self deep inner feelings excruciating inner yearning for life and self-expression and with all of it yet to die that's a very powerful phrase isn't it i don't know if you know um the guy whose name is Jason Silva, he is a host of Origins a TV show on National Geographic and he usually releases great inspirational videos on his Instagram and on his Facebook and actually I've learned about this book thanks to him because he was quoting this phrase and it hit me so hard that I decided to actually read this book. I really understood how short life is and how small we are looking at the entire world looking at the entire perspective and the entire system how it works you and your problems are really really so tiny and putting everything into such perspective makes life even more exciting and easier well, maybe not easier because there is nothing easy about life, right? But just that understanding that you need to live your life fully because it is short and it is very limited. Next book I want to talk about is Shantaram by Gregory David Roberts, an Australian author. The book describes a real life story of the author. When I started reading this book, I was like, oh my god, it's so huge, I'll never be able to finish it, because the book is indeed, I don't remember how many, but it was like 600 or 700 pages, unfortunately I don't have the hard copy anymore, I've lost it somewhere, but I'll definitely buy another one, because I want to have this book in my library, it's just from page number one it sucks you into the story and doesn't let go until you actually finish the book the story is about his life he was a prisoner and he ran out of prison and he went to india in india he found great community uh, in the slam that supported him actually and offered him um, a job and offered him a place in their society in their community and he writes all the stories all the things that he had to go through in india and all the characters that he described are like when you read it you imagine them you picture them and by the end of the book they almost become like your friends honestly and the storyline also tells about human resilience human empathy and the fact that even out of bad, like coerced situation, there still is a way out and you can still find 
people who love you, people who support you, and even by going through the weirdest and the toughest situations, you still can remain human. Moving on to the next book, and I think this one is quite popular. I assume every woman knows about this book, and if not about the book, probably about the movie. The movie is starring Julia Roberts, and her name in the movie is Liz, Liz Gilbert. That's right, Elizabeth Gilbert and her book Eat, Pray, Love. And this might sound like a cliché, read that, done that, but in fact, this book is appealing to any century, any age, I think anyone. And would that be a woman or a man, it doesn't really matter, because it talks about all the necessary necessary that's i hate that word i always have a trouble with pronouncing that word by the way while we're on my accent issues i <laughs> wanted to say that reading books and i read everything in english like these days i only read english books um well maybe time to time I would pick up a book in Russian or French, but not that often. Like, this might happen, like, once in six months, but everything else I read in English. And for those who learn, this is an incredible tool. It is an incredible practice to read, read, and one more time read in English. That's how you learn words. That's how you learn how to construct your sentences, that's how you learn how to express yourself in the proper way. So just a side note that reading in English can improve your language skills. Back to eat, pray, love. All the necessary feelings, all the feelings that human beings crave. Happiness, spirituality and love. This book also inspires to travel. I guess, because in the first part she went to Italy and she describes all the adventures that she had while in Italy and all the delicious food and expressive people around her and all the full of life communities, like that's Italy. And then she went to India, which is um, the prey part where she was in the uh, ashram uh, for a month or two and she was just praying and being quiet and trying not to get distracted but by any other thoughts but just developing her spirituality and connection to the higher self and in the third part she went to Bali which actually is my dream to go I want to go there and I would love to spend there like a month or two to fully absorb that lifestyle and that sense of happiness. I don't know, everyone who's been there says that it's a magical place. The point is, I got this dream from this book. She described Bali as a magical place where she finally put herself together and she finally got back to normal life. She healed completely and in Bali she once again opened herself to the world and opened herself to other people and were available to connect and that's where she met love of her life highly recommend to read it for those who haven't yet and last but not least the classics alchemist by paulo coelho this is well this is indeed classics and i think everyone already read that like at least 10 times and it's a tiny book, it's very tiny, I don't know, there are about 100 pages, so very easy to read. But in those 100 pages, there is so much wisdom and so much truth that hit me very hard. And I'm not going to talk about what it is about and tell the entire story because it wouldn't be interesting to read. But just the bottom line, that sometimes you might be overlooking what's right next to you and you might not pay attention to the happiness that's right there you just don't see it all right guys that's it for today i hope you like this list and i actually hope that you're gonna read at least a few books from my list and 
I want to ask you something. Please, if you've read those books or you're going to, just don't forget, come back to my channel, come back to this video and write in comments what you think of these books. I just want to share the thoughts on whether you liked it or you didn't like it, what you think and if it helped you to improve somehow or you just thought that this just was a complete waste of your time. <laughs> Please share your thoughts in comments. I would highly appreciate that and I can't wait to see you again in my next videos. Bye!